What's up friends, the RST first has been tested, now it's time for the maintenance uh, guide or tutorial and we're gonna see whether it's, it will work better after the full rebuild. Let's do it. Do you remember the first step? It's cleaning, cleaning everything, especially if you want to do something with the suspension, you need to have clean environment. Everything is clean and now just before you put your attention to anything, make sure you let the air out from the air spring. The air means air valve. Time to remove our lockout remote. If you don't have the remote, you've got just this small lever here. Remove it. First the cable and for that we use a very tiny one millimeter Allen key. This is our hydraulic lockout. We're going to pour out the oil from the uh, right uh, stanchion. Uh, it's good to use something that will show you how many milliliters of oil was there for two reasons. Number one, uh, because you will know how much you need to put back. Or number two, uh, if there was if, if you know how much should be inside, uh, then you will know uh, that there was maybe too little or it was too much and so your uh, seals must be replaced. In order to pour out all oil, just work on your lowers, pumping it out. It's time for the air assembly. These are our lower legs. On our left side we've got the uh, rebound assembly and on the right side we've got just the mounting bolt. Four millimeters Allen key, eight millimeters Allen key, clockwise loosening, counterclockwise loosening. Now I've come upon the problem because uh, my bolt just spins with the thread inside. What do we have to do? I'm gonna assemble back the, the air spring and pump it. The maximum air pressure for this uh, RST first uh, fork is 150 psi. I'm gonna pump it to let's say 120, 125. Let's see how it goes now. No problems. And all thanks to the pressure we've got here inside. Don't forget to let all the air back out. Before we remove, disassemble the lowers, it's good to have just some kind of buckle under it or some cloth because uh, there the can be some oil still inside. Once more we need to unthread this part. This is the left station with the air spring inside. This is the right one with the rebound and our hydraulic lockout. At this moment you can feel some resistance. Removing this element can be also tricky because it takes some, some force. So you just move like this, a little bit pulling, pulling, pulling. You don't want to damage the seals and then it will come off.
In this case we've got the internal retaining ring. Uh, on some other first models there will be just, uh, you, you're gonna just need a, a socket uh, and you're gonna just um, unscrew some part. Here we need to remove the retaining ring. Here was the air spring, it's all removed. Uh, this is the cartridge for rebound and the hydraulic lockout. One thing, I've got this little plastic part here uh, and my uh, tool has two small pins for it. I'm not gonna be trying to, to unthread this one, but please let me know, let us know if you know, do we unthread this one clockwise or counterclockwise? That would be very helpful. Uh, info. We can still uh, clean the inside with it here, but it would be so much easier if this was removed. This is super important part of this tutorial. First off, I'm gonna have two questions to you guys because there's so few info uh, on the internet. And second, I will show you how to do the stuff, how to go about maintaining the fork and how it works. First off, my fork is made up of these parts here. When you remove any part, just put it where it should be on the side which, which you will know how it goes back. So for example, this rubber thing here, which works against bottoming out, uh, is not symmetrical, so it cannot go this way, it should go that way, put it as it should be, all right? This is our negative spring, this is the air spring right here assembly, um, this is the, these are the lower legs, upper legs, the rebound uh, and the hydraulic lockout. This is to show you how it works because um, let's start with the right leg. The hydraulic uh, rebound system, that's the thing you can see here. First important thing, uh, if you look up at the RST tutorial, there will be this, how do you call it, screw, you do, you use a socket for this, you can also use such a wrench in order to remove your uh, rebound cartridge. There was no such thing on my RST though, there was this retaining uh, ring. So you might come upon uh, the difference here. And then secondly, uh, let's show, let's, uh, let's present to you how the rebound works. Rebound, let's open the, the lockout. Okay, this is now slow rebound, which means the fork will not go back very, very fast. Now let's set it on the minimum or maximum speed. I can easily uh, like stretch it out back. We need oil for that. Now another question to you guys. Um, RST on their tutorial say that you should use for the first air model, this is first air, 90 milliliters of oil, but there was 125 out of the box. Between 90 and 125 there's lots of difference. I would never put 35 milli milliliters more than, uh, than recommended amount because you could damage uh, your seals, you could just blow off uh, the, the whole cartridge. Why do they use that much, 125? That's the question to you guys, how much do you use? Uh, I'm not gonna put 90 milliliters, I'm just gonna pour back this in because this is clean and, and it just go, goes back. So this is just for, for, for this uh, tutorial. So that's, that's one thing. Now the hydraulic lockout, this is actually the compression. Uh, let me show you how it works. Now it's open. Now, now it's locked, you can see it stops right there. When I open it fully, it goes easily all the way. So this is the compression, but um, with the hydraulic lockout, it will just close the, the, the holes, uh, if you will, uh, and so the oil will not be able to go through it. It will be just locked out. That's, that's this part, this side. This side, this is the air spring. Here we've got the valve. So we just, uh, um, uh, we pump the, the air through this little plastic thing. There is a hole here inside and the air goes between these seals. And so you can adjust how hard it, it's gonna be. This is the negative spring here. 
this is how it works, this is how it looks like. As you know on my review, it has this stiction thing and I was thinking, would it help to pour a little bit of oil uh, to, the, to the left leg as well, down here? I'm not gonna do it, this is a question to you guys. Can we tune up this one by pouring a little bit of uh, oil? The oil will not uh, go in between these seals, but there is uh, the grease, right? Maybe just, just here it would help a bit. I'm not sure about it, this is the question, open question to you guys. Uh, because as you know, it didn't work very, very well. That's it. Now uh, I would use a degreaser to remove the old grease. I'm not gonna do it because it's all new, it's clean. So I'm just assembling it back. Uh, and also on this side, since I haven't removed this part, I don't know how to do it. I can easily clean the uh, this tension inside. Uh, but I'm gonna use um, warm water for that also. Make sure after using the water, everything is dry. It's also dry inside there. Don't let it just dry by itself because it can take days, many days. Uh, use some cloth, put it inside and make sure it is all dry. So now I'm just gonna clean uh, what you can see here and then put it back together. Oh, one thing, um, this RST has also, can you see here, the sponges inside there, which is very good because uh, they will soak up the oil, uh, making um, the fork work just more sensitive, to be more sensitive. This one isn't very sensitive, but it's got the sponges, so you know uh, what it is What is it for. Um, now, cleaning time. you might need to use some more force in order to put it all the way through. The ring is on its place, make sure that's the case. No voices. Oh. Yeah. This part needs some force and feeling. Oh. Time for the oil, the right stanchion. Let's work a bit on this one. I'm loving the sound. You know what, I'm gonna put a bit more of the grease. Because we've got here the remote lockout, so we need this cable guide here for our housing. And if we didn't have one, if we only had the lever right there, you would probably have like two springs, two little balls, and then the lever, pretty easy thing. From the outside, everything dry. Little bit of a grease here. Mm. 
Now important thing, uh, we search for the full lockout position. That's it. Locked out, opened, yeah. From the locked out position, I'm opening it right now. And that's how I'm gonna mount my cable. It's all about finding the right hole here for the spring so that uh, it's just tight enough uh, when the, the lockout is on and it will have the force to open it up. Okay, the fork is working, now it's locked out, cool. And you know what? You know what? I didn't know what's changed, but it works smoother. Just to sum up, the work has been done. One thing I don't like about uh, the lockout remote is that there is really badly, stupidly made uh, little hole for the cable. It has the edges, so when you remove the, the end cap from the cable, it will fray a little bit and then when you try to uh, put it through that little hole, it frays even more. So I didn't like this job here. Uh, it works, it's fine. Otherwise, it works a little bit smoother. Uh, all the questions I have asked to you, if you could answer some of those because you've tried it, let us know. Otherwise, this has been the full overhaul for the RST First Air or most of the RST Air shocks. Ah. <sighs> Guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Remember to join our forum.sigbiker.com where we discuss all the topics, uh, training, service, any issues with the bikes. If you want to share anything with us, join our Facebook group. All the links are below. And if you want to join my patrons, feel free to do so. And now, okay, you might watch just one or two episodes more, but then let's go and ride. <laughs>